Welcome, Brian, everybody, Brian. to my, <laughs> to my <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> what a thiefer. I take full credit for this. <laughs> At least that's what's on record, eh? <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, so I got to keep setting up some other stuff, too. So, um, I don't know, like the whole live streaming thing, um, at, at least, uh, oh, hello, Eon. <laughs> nice to see you. Yes. So, so uh, nice. Cool. So, um, yeah, I'm still not really set up with my other camera and stuff. Um, we'll forgive you. Yeah. I was thinking to do it just how I normally would. So maybe uh, just do this right for now, so we don't fiddle uh, with like the camera around. Like yeah, I wonder if I can uh, switch cameras even, like in Zoom. Probably I can. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to see you talking. Much yeah, that'll that'll work. I guess. Enjoy it. Wait. I'm gonna put these away. Yeah, I'm just like, no matter what cards we're making, I'm putting them into a pile and I'm yeah. like trying to yeah. settle, get some technique to. Ian, are you being kidnapped by aliens? Kind of breaking up a bit. I am? Yeah, yeah. You, you sound you sound like there's an alien involved in your background. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't say any, but I guess I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, that was nice. I appreciate it. Is it still happening? Yeah, you're, yeah, it's, it sounds pretty bad, but we'll live. Shit. It's a connection or something. It's because I gave up hosting to a Canadian. Maybe that's why <laughs> we ruined it. Yeah. As we are known to do. Okay, let's get going. Let's start. I want to learn here. Teach yeah, me, yeah. master. Teach me, oh master. Okay. Um, well, so this is what we. Oh wait, is it reversed? Is the writing backwards? Nope, that's fine. It's on my screen. Oh, that's weird. It's reversed. Oh, it should be mirrored on yours because uh, <laughs> okay. because when you're looking at yourself, you want to yeah, you're used to a mirror the more than you're used to a camera. And I have to uh, get my kid out of uh, furniture. Hold on. Okay. Anyway, so this that's cool. We can work with that. So what we did last, whatever, whenever it was, was it Friday or whatever? This is just that deck from that. So. We started with Notepad, Notepad protocol. Uh, we ended up going to Handshake protocol. And what else do we got? It's feedback and Bootstrap. Wait, no, Strike Point was first. Okay. So this is basically the game that we played. Yeah, let's start from the beginning because. Uh... Well, let's clarify them, right? Sure. Yeah, we have to go through each one and Lincoln. Make, make sure we're all kind of on the same page. We remove the forty-minute time limit. Yeah, uh, that's because I I'm subscribed or whatever. Nice. I assume. Cool. All right. You still here, uh, Eon? Is he yes. Kind of, okay. Okay. Cool. And Vicky, is that your name? Nice ghost. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, nice to meet you. Yes, by, indeed. By vid chat. Hello. Cool. Are you following along with the deck too? Like you got some cards going, or? Yeah, I got all the ones from the last video so far. Cool. Very nice. Uh, I'm gonna wing it. All right. So. I guess I'll just kind of go through the ones that we did last time, just so that we kind of all are on the same page here. We know what's going on. So we're introducing protocols. That's the way that we're playing the game right now. Anyways, I guess it doesn't always have to be like that, but 
Um, this is to get a core of behaviors to, in sync, to synchronize our behaviors so that we can all play the game cooperatively. So that's why it's, at least at first, the game is presenting like this. Um, so we're starting with uh, index cards. That doesn't even have to be that way. Um, so there is an index card protocol, which, which is implied but not uh, explicit here. Um, the notepad protocol basically just says that uh, you can use any, any, of, any card uh, as a scratch pad, as just whatever comes to your mind, you can start writing it down and you can make it more clear later on. It's kind of like at least a reminder for yourself. Um, and it's like the big, the, the start of any card is you don't really know what it is exactly, but you just write notes for yourself kind of thing. And this is to encourage, um, encourage, or it helps to encourage people uh, if they don't think they know what they're doing to say like one of the first, very first cards is you have permission to write whatever you want on a card. <laughs> like you're not, the rules are not going to be, uh, like nothing's going to be messed up if you do that. It's, it's just going to help if you do that. Um, so any questions about that one? So, we can... uh, sorry, uh, just before the part where you're saying uh, you're allowed to uh, write anything down on the mm -hmm. card. What did you say before that? I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's just, just an encouraging protocol. It gives you the freedom to, to know that, that it's okay to put whatever you want on a card because you're going to be the one reading it later and it'll, it'll rem remind you of your thought. Okay. So like, for example, like the strike point protocol card here, I, I started drawing a picture. Like yeah. even though, even though protocols are more like heuristic uh, and like uh, linear in nature, you could say like in that regard, um, what was written down here was a picture, right? So it's like just whatever, whatever you need to do uh, to get thoughts down on paper. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're just introducing strike point fiat, by fiat, not uh, through any reasons. Um, yeah, and I'm not I'm not giving like an exact like a heuristic type of. Uh, right, you're you're not jumping logically from one to the other. You're just giving those two as is. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. So yeah, because protocols would follow that kind of a format that mm -hmm. you're taking care of something and it's kind of known that things go wrong and what to do when those things go wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to uh, establish that it was a fiat uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's, you could say that, where's my pen? Fiat is okay. All right. And <laughs> so playing the game, what we are doing is um, finding other people to play with, and we are um, exchanging ideas or exchanging cards or doing what we're doing right now, basically, uh, which is to make sure that we're kind of up to date on some kind of shared idea space. Um, so that's what the handshake protocol is about. It's making that explicit that, um, two peers are coming together and they're playing a game and they're updating each other. Uh, so later on when you ha when your deck is more established and you're working on it on your own or often out in the environment, when you come back and meet a friend again that you've played with, you will both, your decks will have changed. And so you will have to update each other on that. Um, so this kind of thing that's, happens when that's you first- the handshake? Yeah. Okay. This is happening when you first meet somebody or also when you're reconnecting. Handshake protocol means getting up to speed, basically. That's that's the basis okay. of it. So those are so that's the first three uh like fundamental things. Uh first three, we've done two so far. Uh strike point? Uh strike oh, we point have... is the next one that we did. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we're just reviewing. Okay, I just got confused in the order there. Yep. Go um, on. So then we went to strike point, and 
this is the one that took, I guess we were on this for like an hour or more. Um, but basically the idea is that, uh, the way that I explained it anyways, is when you're dealing with systems and systems thinking, and you're trying to, uh, you're trying to uh, behave properly in an environment, um, you're going to find a bunch of different elements are interacting with each other. And really the way to learn that environment is learning about the elements and how they interact with each other and what your place is in that environment, like how to, how to, how to do that behavior. Um, so, and, and I also brought up the, that kind of dichotomy between left brain and right brain, uh, where the left brain wants a, a rational, like, um, let's say an essay, you just write an essay, like a string of, of words um, to, to make sense of it and process it as a program. Uh, the right brain wants to see a picture. So it's like how, you're, how your eyes are open right now and you're looking at whatever you're seeing and the things in your vision, there are so many objects all at once. So you're seeing a screen, a chair, your own hand, uh, a pen, cards, all these things you're seeing all at once. And this is kind of how the right brain is, 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 um, is show, is showing you a picture and then you're kind of flowing through those objects. So it, it's different than a, a, a linear, uh, as in reading a book. Well, even in vision, it provides the perfect metaphor for both because you have peripheral and you have your uh, focus point. Right? Yeah, sure. And yeah, your, yeah, yeah. Your, your focus point is extremely linear, whereas the peripheral vision is exactly as you were saying. You're mm -hmm. seeing everything at once. Yeah, true. Good point. I've never tried using that analogy, but that, that's, that works. That works very well. So, so, yeah, the strike point, it's basically, it's saying that you're gonna you're gonna hop from from perspective to perspective within a web of meaning, and this is how you're gonna convey um, convey something. Uh, and this is one of this has been one of the most difficult challenges was figuring out how to express um, how to express something to somebody when as soon as you, you open your mind to the fractal, it just explodes in your own face and nothing, what's coming out of your mouth? Like, you don't even know. Like, it's, it's just crazy. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, strike point is, a, is kind of like uh, my approach to a very difficult problem of how to, how to convey uh, a system. And we see these, these webs of meaning everywhere. Right. No matter which, no matter which domain of behavior we're looking into, we're always seeing um, this this collection, this web of meaning, in a in a in any particular domain. And and uh, the particular domain at place is the actual um, uh, this uh, card game, right? At which point you're actually prevent presenting this uh, bunch of. Uh, um, webs of meaning through the three cards right yep. and then uh the strike the, the 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 strike points where the the path through them where the uh notepad and handshake then strike points so that's an example of it right like it's the mm -hmm. same it's an example of the same thing yeah like you're do you're doing what you're explaining mm -hmm. exactly yeah you, you see it right here these are these are elements of of you could say the game we're playing the we're playing the game right now and that's that's our strike point uh, but the strike point can change at any at any time and, yep. and it's like because as soon as i pull up the strike point card or the handshake card it's like that's kind of like a mini strike point you could say mm -hmm. um, so we go into that domain and talk about that but then we come back out we come back out to the game and then we we continue uh, on another another aspect until this picture kind of comes up and um, although this is this is a particular arc that that we're creating here um, as we were talking uh, with Corey last time um, it's really like once these pieces are in this isn't the the arc that you're going to eventually be seeing 
you'll just have the whole, the game will be in your head and you'll be able to, uh, as per your context, be able to navigate yeah. it. And yeah, it's, arcs, you'll, this, this is a bootstrap arc, really. Mm -hmm. Like very, very basic, get it going. Yeah. Yep, and so we had. What does the arc refer to? Like a, it's almost like a limb of the hyperstition. Like it, it goes back, it goes up to the hyperstition. Uh, what's like, what, 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 the word what, arc? Yeah. What do you mean by arc? So if um, portal, like like see portal mountain. Um, so if uh, if uh, the points are all the different spaces right at portal mountain then the arc would be the journey that you're taking from place to place to place to place so okay. you, your journey is going to be from here to there whereas mine from here to here to there to here and you know what i mean like uh so that's why the arc is different and it's uh and i think the lightning bolt is uh, the metaphor brian likes to use mm -hmm. yeah yeah it because you never have the same lightning bolt twice kind of thing okay. yeah and you, you you bring up um the, the kind of like I guess the example that we were using last time of a, of a hyperstitional arc. So this is the lightning bolt that that you're seeing when you see a vision of something in the future and you see it in enough detail that that you can act on it and manifest it. So that's kind of like that lightning strike. You're like, aha! I know I can do this, and then you then you do it. Mm hmm yep, yep. Um, <laughs> go on go so on could the strike point also be considered like um it, its existence as a card also kind of serves to kind of define how our mind will associate the cards in different ways later on and also um, how they've been established already you're kind of like a little bit broken up there um Damn. trying to think of what you meant by that though too because i kind of got it uh hmm. the, the card is supposed to reflect an idea within your mind like that this is supposed to be an externalized representation of of your inner internal processes yeah i think you established that with notepad right yeah, uh did i well pretty much notepad says like put something on the card like whatever yeah, it is, put okay, it on. yeah, yeah. right yeah so. yeah yeah i'll put a note here for about mind mapping Maybe that is that is a pretty good starting point, I suppose. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, so I guess we can carry on here quickly. Uh, so we went into then uh, we tried to do bootstrap protocol, um, and that was the idea that you're using uh, materials, you're using um, like abstractions and whatnot, um, mapping materials, and you're trying to experiment with that. So in other words, you're being given instructions and you don't know why an instruction is built a certain way, but um, you're trusting that, um, that it's gonna lead you to, uh, to an understanding within a certain environment or a certain domain of behavior. Um, so you're just making what you've just done explicit in terms of a card. You're literally taking the yeah. process you took the person through and then, hey, by the way, what we've just done, yeah, this is this, this it's in the, now in the content of this card. Mm -hmm. So you're literally, yeah. boot, so you're literally bootstrapping at the same time as you're explaining the bootstrap. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty wild. Um, so yeah, I put, Put, providing model materials to the feedback process, so then we had to we had the to pull feedback, up yeah. another card here, the feedback protocol. Um, so that I just wrote here, take a model and experiment with it, and feed the results back into the model. 
so this is like the the process of 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 living and learning the process of of take of of using your understanding of reality to create experiments and to take actions and then to turn around after the fact and um, see what you've learned from that experiment and use it to adjust the very models that you used for the next time you, you use them. Right, right. And uh, is this the complete bootstrap or is there more? Um, as far as what we've done with Corey? In general. Um, as, as far as explicit bootstrap, like an, an ex, inexplicit cars themselves, is there more? Because this looks, because uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Yeah. This looks a lot like um, areas of concern to me. Not necessarily directly mapped, but structured in a very similar way. How so? Well, it start, It builds up from a basic to a higher level, and as soon as you get to a highest level, uh, you mentioned, uh, and you're doing this through a, um, a fifth card here, feedback, which is refer referenced in the um, bootstrap. So bootstrap uh -huh. kind of con captures the conceptualization of what we've been just doing, right? Yep. And then with the f with the feedback protocol, just the defining more of a detail more than anything else. Um, it, it literally, Bootstrap just says, okay, cool, we're back to where we started. Yeah. So you're, boot, you're literally bootstrapped. And uh, this is kind of like what focus is uh, and in relation to the first four concerns. Like, you know what I mean? Interesting. And, anyway, it works in the same principle as essentially what I'm noticing. Nice, yeah, we can try line that up somehow i don't really know exactly. we might even get we might even get parallel categories yeah so i'm looking at it it looks like basically like a, a loop like it's just like uh, yeah. the pooch one is like providing model materials to the feedback process initial process of transmitting core concepts to an uninitialized peer and then the feedback protocol is like take a model and experiment with it and feedback the results into the model. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to look like a loop. And that's what I think pisses a lot of people off. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because they, like, if you think about it, like what people want, think business, um, they want beginning, middle, end, beginning, middle, end. And because they can capture that as a little small little packet and they can pass it around like a little trinket. Um, but you can't do it with this, right? So it trips uh, people up a lot, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You actually have to go through the process to understand the process. Uh, it's, yeah. And this is where the faith thing is, is, the, is so, t so much uh, touched on like we're not not discussing like religious faith or any of that like blind faith kind of stuff but just like the ability to have faith that in the person that what they just said is what they that they'll take you through the process to give you the understanding of what they just said that you didn't currently understand like that that there's a hang up there right and yeah. of course the problem is that everybody and their mother took took advantage of it over um, the course of humanity and so here we are today trying to figure out how to talk to um, human beings <laughs> <laughs> what a task yeah yeah we really did ourselves a favor there <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, yeah cool nice um, so we did have some other uh, we did have some other cards that we got into. Yeah. So they're worth a mention right now. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, let's see, where's my space at? Just give them some context. So, okay, so let's just see where do we actually go from there? Bootstrap. Uh, we did temperament and triad in the last one. Right. I'm trying to think of what the logical kind of order, the order of it. So I have temperament here. Well, temperament has to do with the feedback, does it not? Mm, 
Oh, what I mean, oh, oh, I know which one. I think I'm pretty sure I went into coherence protocol. Um, and so the that's, bootstrapping the that's core. how I linked in bootstrapping. So mm. but this as, a, as an activity of what the participant is supposed to be up to. Um, yes, yes. And this and the coherence protocol just pop like immediately pops up just through the fact that you're trying to accomplish like do any of this in the mm -hmm. first place. Yeah, it's very next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you got to be like the, the thing needs to get coherent. And it helps and, to, to tell people that like to, to show that there's kind of a, an obvious or there's a progression implied to it like and this yeah. applies to any area of behavior, but here we're kind of specifically interested in the core first. Uh, yeah, being able to play with these cards and to, yeah. to, to, to lay them out for somebody like, like to, to lay out this bootstrap for somebody else, I would say is, mm -hmm. is this core that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, you have to have the in, in, inner model, basically the inner understanding of, of what's going on. So like in if this game can be used to um to share and um let's say con share and converge or whatever on any area of behavior if this can be used to um map out any area of human behavior then the core is the behavior of of that which is like in itself is a behavior but it's it's also like the ever present behavior to all other behaviors, which is weird. And that's, right. that's it's the, the fundamental guild. The core of explaining the game is playing the game. Is my audio still shitty? It's better. Yeah, it's okay. It's It's got a problem, but it's better. I, I disconnected and reconnected. Yeah, I saw. Um, we'll yeah, it's okay. We can understand you. Maybe it's because we added more video. It's possible. Look at the it's like on my end, y'all were all alienized, and and, and y'all couldn't. The problem y'all were having with me, I was having with y'all. Uh, kind of can can hear you. Have you maybe tried turning off your video? Like not. Well, maybe I guess your video, but um, your video feed, yeah. Well, I laid it down. I'm, I'm technically at work right now, so. Oh, okay. Do you have a good internet? Do you have good internet connection there, or? Oh, uh, I mean, just my phone data. Oh, that's oh, yeah. that's, that's terrible. Probably it. Probably it. Um, Throttled. All right, so we're almost we're almost like up to speed with with the last game right now. Cool. Um, so we got. Well, I feel like, What's that? I, I I feel like it was. I mean, by the time this point was reached yesterday. Yep. I feel like um, the fractal had already kind of been exposed. Mm -hmm. Yep. And. Um, I'm just trying to think about what, because, you know, you know, you started the bootstrapping here implicitly, brought it around to an explicit understanding that we were bootstrapping into the game. But it's just not having the same effect. It's not like it's not like you can just like have a formula where you just like go through it and then. Like, um, what, I think this might happen when you're describing or when you're defining something. Like you actually have to be in the process of like describing something that you're doing. Right. Yeah. So in, the, in this what, case, because we're describing describing things, it looks like that. It looks like these cards. But if it was like a different subject, 
you wouldn't start with laying out notepad pro protocol, for instance. You'd just start right. with taking notes and uh, and then uh, the and then you would actually express an agreement about what you're taking notes about and then uh, and then where to move off from there and that'll become your arc right it's you're not going to ex be explicitly creating cards about those things which is what we're doing but we're taking that process in terms of cards and then expressing the process right yeah. So, so um, I think what would help is to go through this process on another topic after we've gone it through for the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for does, sure. Does that yeah. help with what Ian yeah, is concerned us? Cards is like a, they're almost like a definitions. Um, well, well, you got to remember, we're kind of different uh, temperamentally. We're all different people, right? Like, um, I'm very much like th this makes so much sense to me, right? So I'm all over this stuff, like, okay. like a like a fly on shit. <laughs> um, and so it's totally expected not not to be like everybody's main cup of tea, but like knowing about it and just knowing the heuristics of what's happening. Um, I think would be very beneficial for anybody going up and dif dealing with p people of mm -hmm. different types. And sorry, I gotta but, uh, talk to my wife. Do all of this without any cards at all? Like it would just be, um, just like a flow of a conversation, maybe. But yeah, yeah, definitely well, you can just conversation, but also like experience because. You have to, it, it involves like the means that you have, everything that's already in your mind is involved in the overall shape of the thing that gets built, right? I mean, right. so in a sense, it's like, I don't know if strictly conversation can achieve what this um, added element of it's like we're sharing like hmm. more like concrete artifacts as well but i don't know how to incorporate like he said it can be like another topic besides like establishing you know, the fact that we're using note cards, but if we are using note cards and playing this game to the effect of learning the rules and structure of the game, then would it not require a recognition of note cards being used? No. Um not note cards because uh, i don't know if you remember brian mentioning this at the very initial on the onset um it doesn't have to be note cards it's basically note cards is one implementation of how you right. keep track of what you need is some form of media to record um right. and, right. And, the, and the ability to sequence it it has to have certain criteria so you can get the structure in some form but does it need to be note note cards? No. For for using note cards, you uh, say to yourself, use notes. For using, say, uh, some kind of database, say, use this database and this use this schema. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, but, uh, it's but, a very but, open end. But, right. I agree with that. But I was just saying, in so much as you are using index cards, so so that's already implicitly. It's already implicit in the fact that you're using the index card and the fact that you're saying take notes on your index cards. It's already established no matter how you go about it. So you can go explicitly about it and state that this is part of the, of the protocol and mention what I just mentioned in terms of how it can branch out. That could part, those cards could exist. I mean, Brian, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong here. I do have that card already. <laughs> there you go. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like uh, it, it, it's it, the the trick is to not mix up 
abstractions and concrete things too much so that it, it, it the fractal isn't uh, understood. So because this, what you're getting into is correct. Like, I'm not saying you're, like, you're asking something like uh, outlandish here. You are right you're, to point to this. But the problem is, is that if we start to explore down this road and uh, what it, its implications, well, you'll find that this happens to every single node for, ev for a variety of reasons in many, many different directions. And what will happen is, is that the small, tiny, containable uh, little core we're trying to exploit um, to, 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 to uh, explain something to somebody else as a, as a process, that's going to be lost in that sea. It's going to completely get drowned out by all the different uh, variants that they can take on. So it's very important to um, um, sort of constrain uh, what you're explaining to what you're explaining rather than to uh, leave yourself too open to these um, not invalid question, but in this arc and this very particular arc, they're not relevant. Um, they're, they're they're relevant in a different sense, or uh, I should say, not to the explanation of the game itself. Right. So th that detail can be filled in much later once the core of the game is understood. Well, okay. Is there any once the core is like understood and embodied in the player? Is there is there gameplay beyond? that that is more than that well yes because the cards become besides the point right it's more like it's kind of like how portal mountain terminology is completely besides the point and it's just you can just translate this word to that word and uh, you'll get the concept in some different theology or whatever um, it's the same idea the cards are beside the point the the process of going through putting something down and structuring it this way to begin with, that's the takeaway. So like, uh, Vicky, your concern was uh, the fact that it's all, uh, you know, definition based and whatnot, right? Like you take this idea and you put it into um, a, a, a story, right? Um, but like capturing capturing this beginning sort of a trajectory of something something happening to somebody or whatever. Um, forgive my lack of uh, ability to come up with any helpful detail on that part. Um, uh, but yeah, like if you turn this into a story, for instance, this becomes a more of a, like, a, like a lesson, you know, like a lesson hidden behind that story. Um, so the idea isn't to necessarily have cards in hand and, uh, you know, like be all, what's the definition of this card? And, uh, you know, it's, it's to capture the essence of this arc. This is one story that we need to basically be very acquainted with because it's the story of all stories. Right. And in this direct context, there is a narrative here, and that's the narrative of yeah we're like playing the game using cards yeah your, your your problem here is that you're talking to extremely abstracted people and so um for me this is this is like what i need to see right because for me the stories they hide too much of this away yeah yeah i understand that like i always feel like no matter what i'm looking at like i'm missing something for some detail yeah, because it's it, like not looking at it. One because way you're also another. not the author of the story when you hear it. You, you 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 didn't choose the words that you heard. You you only choose the words how you perceive the words that you heard, right? So yeah. there's a, there's a difference between you and the orator or what or or the author of it. Lots of different reasons for all of this to be the case. Um, but the main point is that it is the case, and. Yeah. We need, I find that really interesting, actually, with like, uh, with like regards to religion, especially like uh, between like, like written texts, like Bibles and stuff like that. Like, they were written down to all be like a certain way. They normalize. Like, yeah, and they can be like mistranslated or translated differently. But then, like with like oral histories and stuff, it all had to be like memorized, like a specific way, and like you couldn't like 
And especially Maybe. with oral history, what, what I found most fascinating is that people would adopt other people's ancestry. I've never <laughs> heard of this concept before because, because, you know, like I grew up in a world where, you know, your records are your records. Um, that's, that's that, who does that kind of thing, right? Like, but uh, I started getting into the whole Norse mythology thing and uh, not Norse, Thor, sorry. This was when I was reading something about in the, the, uh, uh, the islands, the Pacific Islands. Oh, what do you call them? Uh, you know, like the Hawaiian, uh, the uh, uh, and, 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 and and further and further eastern towards New Zealand, and uh, so yeah. W yeah. When I was reading about them, that's one of the things that caught my eye is that it was before the white man came. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, this idea that you could adopt somebody else's ancestry to be more included in the society that you were found yourself in and uh, when again the white man came um, it was uh, what happened was is that only a single tribes uh, recorded uh, um, yeah. history was and so what that created is a uh, is it is it essentially invalidated everybody else that wasn't them uh their way of seeing the same story but differently you know like all of the differences in terms of who's who and why is what um all of that disappeared and quite forcibly it's it, it, it it's like you lose a sense of who you are at that point right um if you belong to that so that's one of the yeah it's kind of like that's just to uh, comment on what you were saying, Vicky. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How how horrible that is! <laughs> like what? Okay. How horrible writing can do people like that? Yeah. It doesn't have to, but it can. That's the yeah. Well, that's kind of the APS. It's almost like yeah, somebody was like writing over you in a way, like somebody right. else comes in and, yeah. and changes yeah. like your identity. It's, pretty weird game to play on people but apparently yeah. we're supposed to or something yeah. well that's why this this game correct me if i'm wrong you know it's part of part of it is like re-establishing identity in a certain relationship to you know mythology or or, or the perceived mechanics of well, once you see the like the depravity of what happens when this is missing, it's hard to actually look away, right? Like once you kind of like sort of, like, this is the thing that we want to click with people, right? Like we don't necessarily want to be all like, follow the system, follow this game, follow this, that, um, because that's just repeating more of the same. What, what we're trying to establish is essentially is that without this feedback, without this, um, constant reverber reverberation into yourself being coherent mm. with oneself essentially is the point and if you can't achieve that there's nothing else that's going to be coherent in your life like it's not going to happen and on top of it all we we can't just leave it at that because like that just leaves it up in the air um we're trying to establish what is it specifically that causes this incoherence and where is it interacting with inside the in there um and and out here and what if anything that can be done about it and clearly the answer isn't another revolution because i mean come on people yeah. mm -hmm. that just creates more of the same again yeah, and uh, it's inherent in the damn word. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the anyway, feed, the feedback protocol is is basically one of the core uh, one of the core pieces of this. Of how do you go out into the world with um, a relationship to the world, not not to simply project your own reality on top of everything, like such as that the example of um, you're saying the like native history. At, um, being been written, written into a single uh, yeah. narrative or uh, like this swath of people, people they all example. had this history and they had this myth mythology and they had this 
and then right and the old variety is gone and then every single one you interact with you're like oh i know you 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 think this and you think that that's that yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the core of the problem that 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 cow, cow, here's from- cowboys <laughs> and indians think about it cowboys and indians as if there's only a single kind of indian or something to that effect and a single right. cowboy type <laughs> yeah well well i'm i'm saying indian is because if uh, you look at uh, north america before the white man arrived sorry i'm just going to have fun with that one uh-huh. um <laughs> Uh, you, you you find that they had like a completely diversified like political landscape in which you know people, there were allies, enemies, uh, totally this understanding of the world, that understanding of the world, like a very 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 diverse uh, landscape of people, right? Completely different from each one from another in some ways, and obviously related in different ways. And then, yeah, that whole concept becomes the Indian. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really funny too because I do like I have Indian friends and they've been to like some of the reservations and they have to go there and look at signs that say like Indian reservation and like they're in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's kind of a funny moment. It's actually pretty sickening like if if you like really think about it, it it's it's quite disturbing that uh that this is the case. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you guys mind if I share the uh, live stream to the lobby? That, of course not. That's the thing we're doing. Uh, I I never would. I'm here for that. <laughs> I I live for that, man. Oh yeah, good. Give me my fame. <sighs> Please ignore that. Portal Mountain. Yeah, but Uh-oh. I feel like uh, I feel like we can get back at like a. Almost like a oh. something that hasn't been done yet, or like something that, uh, like a cultural paradigm that doesn't exist yet, maybe. Where like, there, like there's a way forward from some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of just like it keeps getting worse all the time. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Thing yeah. Like quantifying. Or attempting to quantify like the issue, and you know, trying to bring the solution into like a core set of protocols that can be you know customized each individual, and can make like a network of. Yep. I mean. Yeah, you you got it. Except. Is, yeah. Except the core solution. That, that, is, that is a cultural paradigm that's never really existed apart from something that's very entrapped in esotericism and mystique, you know, like. Right. You just bring it, like, we talk about the trust, like, what level of trust is required other than, like, play this game, you know? Uh huh. It seems like a low threshold. <laughs> it's a much lower threshold than, like, especially in today's climate, where you're like, uh, you know, it's not like you know, look into this religion or this like scientifically triggered, like just like you know, as, as catered to. You know, we've kind of um, you know, we've thrown out the baby with the bathwater when we. Like, oh, we don't need religion anymore as a society because, you know, I, I read somewhere that one of the subconscious reasons for that was like the, the environment isn't as um, hostile and, and the part of our inner need to religiousize our environment is, yeah. is to, 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 yes. I feel like a lot, I like a big part of that might be because of the tendency to like, um, I guess not in every case, but a lot of times it seems like, um, or Christians or Abrahamic religions, they worship indoors a lot. Like it's, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know, like if that makes a difference to you guys, but it, it makes a big difference to me. And like, 
uh, when you just go oh, into like a room good. and sit down together for a lecture is not the same feeling yeah. as when you go on a journey to a place like a oh. shared place and then well, stay at that and then they're like absolutely terrified of nature <laughs> absolutely <laughs> terrified of nature <laughs> The architecture that they're in is designed as its own symbol. Like it's a microcosm of their cosmology that they yeah. to avoid nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah, nature is literally seen as this evil, dark thing to be controlled. Yeah, yeah, and that's like one of the biggest things that I encounter between like, you know, like the way I grew up and between like, you know, I speak to Christians about like uh, spirituality or religion the outdoors is like almost not a part of it at all for them and then only, like, only for picnics only for picnics yeah. and then if you speak to like anyone from back home it's like you, you can't do anything spiritual without going outside or like somehow being outside yeah. or with some natural element yeah like the church is used basically for singing in because it's too cold to be outside <laughs> but, but like the actual like sacred stuff is meant to be like almost like outside the church do you know what i mean like and then like with christianity it's like all the all the religion all the sacredness is inside the church but not outside of it it mm -hmm. feels like well it, it it extends also to like the actual interactions of the people within the church you know like their friends within that building yeah yeah, yeah and they don't, don't know each other outside yeah <laughs> So are, are, we, are, are we still, have we gone off from? A little bit. Eon wants to get back on track, I think. Oh, is there a lot more to cover in terms of the bootstrapping? Uh, there are cards still that, that uh, we haven't presented in this session, which were present in the last one. Um, okay, I'm only, I'm only asking because I have uh, time pressing. I'm pressed for time. Oh, yeah. What's your time like? My time is like, uh, get off of here as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's well, pretty pressing constrain you. I mean, I was just trying to get in some, I would just like to get to some level of understanding, like, yeah, no, no, that's that's fine. This is this isn't uh, this isn't to uh, actually do navigate this meeting. Um, what I wouldn't mind before I disappear, though, is a brief uh, explanation of the cards that you had, and then I'll, I'll have to log off. Cool. All right. So uh, let's see. Where did we go? So we have two more cards here. So our last one was coherence protocol, mm -hmm. uh, which was relevant to the idea of bootstrapping. It kind of shows this the journey of increasing coherence. It's another it's another view of the bootstrap, right? It's a different view of it. Yeah. Of what it looks yeah. like, like in terms of a different view, well, again view. Sure. Anyway, shutting up. Yep. Um, okay, then. Do, 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 do. I can't remember which one I brought up before, but I think it was temperament protocol. And I guess that was because um, when you're, uh, so part of coherence protocol was to be, try and be aware of, of your own coherence with a certain behavior within a certain domain, uh, behavior domain, as well as the coherence of somebody else. So when you're trying to relate to somebody else, it's it's either like, you kind of it's it's supposed to be kind of explicit that you have a certain mastery of a certain skill set uh, or whatever and somebody else does not and then and this kind of helps you to um, the coherence protocol it kind of helps you to understand that when you're trying to teach somebody something like especially um, like talking about like evangelism type stuff um, the first, it, it makes it explicit here that um, some people are going to be hostile to that and they don't want to have anything to do with you at all or to do with that system at all. And, and there's a difference between that and between somebody who is more neutral and who is, uh, who is present and, but not 
who is present in the environment of behavior. They're present within the environment, but they don't necessarily know or care what's going on. And that's the guest. And then this is what it, what it makes kind of explicit um, for getting back to that evangelism example is that um, there is a leap, a leap of faith between guest and participant. And that's when, uh, when somebody feels like they're, um, they're going to actually take their own story and modify it such to include this, this, um, these people, this system, the environment, whatever it is, they're going to actively try and make, uh, do this experimentation process. They're going to actively try to bootstrap themselves in to the environment. And it's, it's just important to, to know that that's clear that some people are doing that and some people couldn't care less yet maybe they just feel good and they keep coming back to that experience or it probably just um it, 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 it's probably like they understand the words but the sentences that, that they form are not coherent to them like uh as an, as an analogy potentially so, yeah. yeah yeah like so like a lot of people ask us about the terms like, because they don't make sense to them that's that's sort of what mm -hmm. it is yeah but in, in that case you're developing awareness though like you can kind of tell that something good is happening but you don't know what's going on at all yeah an inquiry into the terms which begin the participation process sure yeah yeah um yeah so that's coherence protocol it's important for actually relating to somebody on the other side of the game so to speak um because you kind of have to sense out or feel out where you think you are where you think the other person is and and go from there Okay, so the next one is? Next one is temperament protocol. Um, and this was this is basically to acknowledge that um, different people have different preferences or uh, um, prefer to navigate the, uh, differently. They have different yeah. perception. Different, feed, different types of feedback, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that... So I linked triad protocol to that basically because this is what, this is where we're deriving those uh, temperaments from. Um, yeah. Okay. So that is clear to me. Um, so I'll have to uh, leave it for now. Cool. Um, sorry about the, the uh, short visit. But yeah, sorry. Anyway, anyway uh, good luck. I'll, uh, I'll get into it a little later with you guys. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Later. All right. So we can keep going, though. Um, yes, I agree. I'm, I'm still. I think. Okay. Let me. Is my audio good? It's b barely passable. <laughs> barely passable. Okay. Yeah. Like I can understand you most of the for most part, but. It's Let me leave and come back real fast and then see if uh, Yeah, maybe if your cell phone is in like a different orientation even or Oops. There was a question I had about uh, the yeah. feedback protocol. Sure, what's and that? It's one that I keep having a lot actually. I like I I find I don't know like what kind of feedback is good feedback for the process? Mm -hmm. um, I think that in general, um, like the body has its own mechanism to tell you whether some feedback is good or bad. And that's, I think what's called like effective, like affect. And it's whether something seems or feels uh, good, neutral or bad. Uh, so like, uh, painful, uh, neutral, uh, or pleasurable. And that's, that can go wrong. Like people can get hooked on drugs and stuff, right? And it, they think it feels great, right? But it's actually not. <laughs> so does that relate to like the feeling of if something's wrong? Like not just good and bad, but it's good and bad, but it's in the sense of like, this is uh, 
wrong or like immoral. This is naughty, like in the sense of like, have you ever had like a certain like a uh, uh, like a certain paranoia, existential paranoia creeping, yeah. and you just kind of feel like the whole world is like not right, mm-hmm. like every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I want to avoid that. I don't like. <laughs> I think you're right, though, Eon. Like, there, it's not. It's not just the obvious, like what feels good or bad, but there's. Um, many different like i guess uh cognitive type things or like like within within the mind that that's kind of not necessarily like a sense like you can feel hot and cold but it's like you can feel yeah. when something is incoherent and i feel like in that same sense like um sometimes we can get it wrong like yeah um, there's like this initial discomfort when being exposed to uh, the experience of coming online or aligning with the stack or however you want to call it. Yeah. I feel like there is this, uh, and, and I think it is. Uh, Your audio is really good, right many, now, by the way. It is good? Yeah, it's like way better. Sweet. Um, nice. I don't have video on. That may have something to do with yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm yeah, just going to cool. keep it off. Yeah, good. Um, but, okay, what, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I forgot where I was. Discomfort of being aligned with the stack. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah there's that yeah. initial discomfort, but it's actually like a really beautiful place to be, but there's something that, I don't know, there's something that makes it seem like it's, and also there's like, uh, it may have to do with your sense of self or something. It kind of gets assaulted. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then like, you kind of have to get there differently each time. Like you have to take a different avenue because it blocks off that previously, like if you have a successful avenue, you know, all these strike points and then bam, like there's that flash and, you know, the frag was uh, exposed or like, you know, you realize your own, however your you want to word it. You suddenly went back kind of to, I don't know if you moved around or. Damn, no, I didn't. I've, good got, now, it. it's good. I've got the it's phone good. sitting on a jar of peanut butter. Okay, it's good now though. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I know what you're saying. You are you seem to be talking about like, um, that I guess that like dopamine hit or whatever, like sometimes that you can get from breaking through into some some new territory, um, and whereas you can't really get that exact same thing again, I guess, like you your mind has already like blazed that trail kind of thing. Well, I mean to put it concretely, like like I, I definitely had. Um, like a powerful experience following you and Corey last mm-hmm. night on that game. Yeah. And, you know, there was that initial, you know, when you laid that notepad protocol, it spoke to me and, and it's sort of like, I saw, I kind of like saw into the future and I sort of established my own, my own hyperstition. I was like, oh, you're just going to gamify the situation and envelop him in a model. Yeah. That was, yeah. My, that, was, that, that was my intuition about what was, as soon as you established that first, I was like, oh, shit. So it's like that, um, that, that, that hyperstition that I established and then I followed along mm-hmm. and then the words he said and the words you said and then the cards it all came together turned into this awesome thing uh-huh. but it, it was like it, I mean, for me like as soon as he's like okay I need to go to another room it like it, it, it like it went back down like it all everything settled down and okay i'm getting kind of like a sense that you might like i think i sense what you might be talking about and it's kind of like this, 
it's kind of like the stack coming online and there's a certain exactly. there's a certain imminence a certain imminence to that like it it seems like i would say that we're not exactly doing that right now and maybe that's what you're what you're pointing out to like all we've done is reviewed right. reviewed some old cards right um, yeah and i think that my i think that my initial like 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 my intention right now to um is different than what it was you know because it's it, it's it's now it's like to understand the game when then it was more just to follow along or Mm -hmm. Just be in it. Be in the moment. I don't really know, but like you said, that that imminence. Yeah. Where it's like, it's like, can that be recreated twice using the same method of? Yes. Yes, it can. Um, so all we've all we've done is establish the core. So this is what we'll need to actually expand and unfold the fractal in whatever direction that we want. And that's up to whoever is peering. So this is normally, I think, I mean, I think that it can be more than than two player game, um, but the the interactions are generally like towards towards another. Like you'll find a shared um, a shared interest or something, or something that you can teach each other, and then you'll start iterating cards toward into that domain. Right. So we're just on the core right now. We're just kind of like firming up the the core the understanding of the core and i think we've we've got it here like that's that's pretty much it um okay so from 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 here where where do we go that's the question <laughs> stack online engage <laughs> so Assuming that if I were to go to like coherence protocol, it would be the idea that you would try and increase coherence from here. Yeah. Right. Like within yeah, within which domain of behavior though? Like like in general it's it's the core. Like you speaking generally, it's the core. Um but it's like what could we teach each other or what what are our projects like what are we we working on that's interesting to each other so are, are you going into a pragmatic sort of like co-activation through mutual activity like do the cards stop or do they keep are we still writing cards hmm. there is the I core think... just like bootstrapping us into some more shared behavior um yeah. yeah like the the core is supposed to bootstrap us into whatever we, we would actually want to do then right and and it's it's supposed to be played single player as well because then you'll have a deck to kind of to go through or sort through and be like uh do you find this interesting do you find this interesting or whatever you know, like I was going to um, go through my deck. I have I have two hundred cards right here. Um, I don't know, like when though, or like how how it's going to work exactly. But like I should be I should be condensing this down and making this into uh, something presentable, essentially. So I could be like. You know, I'm working on this and that, and then somebody would be like, "Oh, that card's interesting. Like, can I copy that card?" And then you copy it into yours, and then you start thinking about it. Every time you sort through your deck, you're seeing a certain, uh, certain card. Um, yeah, like it's it's so detailed. Like, um, I have a card here for for creating a specific type of meme. Uh, using uh, Crusader images or imagery, it's kind of an old card, but um, yeah, I've, I've seen some of those. You're yeah, yeah. So I mean, like for the guild, you know, and yeah, for the guild, like using like um, like StarCraft type, uh, like you know the the Protoss, like <laughs> uh, yeah, for the guild, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and like isomorphous <laughs> that too yeah yeah so that's that's kind of like if i wanted to share that behavior with you and say like eon try make some some memes like here's my here are my recipes for making making memes maybe you can come up with one um so now we sort of entered the shared domain of attempting to it's not necessarily like we're in a quine mode where you're just you know iterating the bootstrap like further along different nodes but it's more like okay we've peered up we've we've shook hands we've bootstrapped mm -hmm. into like we're sharing each other in a sense or, or we're sharing like coherency yeah is that is that what so so we're kind of moving into like a practical like, okay let's mm -hmm. you know because our shared coherency means that we're sharing like underlying mechanics of how we're associating symbols now those associations will underpin any content that we generate is that sort of mm -hmm. yeah that's the fundamental guilt uh, basically is to have a model the self the self model uh, so that your expressions um, out into externalized media can be coherent back again with 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 not only yourself but potentially with others Okay. Yeah. So what, if you're if you're making a meme, what is the purpose of that meme in this context? Like do you mean the Crusader one or Yeah, just just I mean that's the card, you've laid the card out and now yeah. I'm just um expanding. I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking through my deck. Like <laughs> that's it's not really like I would expect you to use it right now. Um yeah. I was wondering if like a good card to have might be like a almost like an introductory one that just like lists some of the skills that you could teach someone like some of the skills that you're offering uh yeah that's that sounds like um here take my card i don't know if you'd call it yeah, it almost like, it almost like a business card, like, <laughs> yeah i have a certain but set it could of also students. just be like stuff that really <laughs> about. yeah well, that gets into a different territory than marketing and how much yeah, of that. I, I feel like it's almost like spaghettiing out and. I don't know um, how much we want to deal with marketing. I don't think that's really our core responsibility, to be honest. Uh, I don't. That's a, it's a good, I it's thinking, a good point. Though. I was thinking more in terms of like specialization. Like if you want to talk to someone about like a, like a certain activity within the guild you would speak to with oh. someone who has designated themselves or is also looking to speak about that topic like how would you match up with someone yeah oh this goes back to uh, an idea we've had for quite a while called the dashboard um which is in part what uh, the telegram is supposed to facilitate but it's really 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 clunky um as you can tell um the idea of the dashboard is to do exactly what you're suggesting it's like uh it's a chat it's not a chat program so much as it is a conversation engine right um so it's supposed to uh first of all one of its features was is this is hyperstition here uh not the past um so one of its features is basically to um keep track of like all the different uh, areas of concern so you 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 everybody here knows that there's more than five right like there's like an yeah. entire stack of guilds that built up on it when we, uh, the the first four belong to what's called the immunity guild right um so um there's uh 12 guilds in in total and it all keeps it, it all goes all the way up to concerns to deal with uh, what i termed uh sanctioned machines for now for lack of a better, I don't want to call it AI because that's stupid. Um, anyway, my point being is, is that that's like 
that's like hypothetical future concern that we kind of should pro potentially look at look at um but anyway all of this is like feeds on top like each new layer feeds and it just restructures the bottom layer in terms of a new um, area of uh, responsibility and all that to say where did i start with this um the dashboard well, yes the dashboard so each area each guild is divided to a certain number of concerns each of these concerns is basically like you there's what's called a domain of progress um so it's like all the way from just um coming across it to the to just operating on in terms of really understanding what it is um and uh oh wait damn it and so if uh there's a system to keep track of of sort of that but through validation for instance you and i had a conversation about this topic and then the engine would ask you do, you, do you feel smarter on this subject or something to that effect, having spoken to me? And if your answer is yes, right, like it's kind of like I get a point. I don't know about it, but I get one. Um, likewise, I can say, uh, do you know more of having to talk, talk to me about this subject? Having, like, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, depending on the degree of coherence and the uh, other elements here, there's this reciprocity of uh, the topic being expressed. And on each given subject, people who are lacking are matched up with people who have uh, who have accumulated, so to speak, this um, knowledge base. That would be that would be the optimal solution to this uh, situation if we were to go full auto. Okay. Wow, that that felt like a business presentation. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely on the broadcast spectrum of. Uh, Um, so what of the, cause I mean, cause, it, cause in general, what, what we are co like elevating each other towards, not just, you know, bootstrapping a conversation, but, you know, entering the inner chamber essentially just to use that language but you know to, uh, to yeah. facilitate you're talking about bringing um, the stack online right right and, and i mean and, and like and 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 maintaining some level of permanence so that it's not just like this lightning flash that Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, cultivating tolerance of it and acceptance of it, because it's more like, I mean, you can say, I mean, it, it, it's almost like the idea of it being a a structure that is being built in the mind is obviously not literally what it is, but. It's you know, more it, like being built in the future, I guess. Yeah, well, like, and in another sense, it's already there, and you're just clearing away the obfuscation so that, right. you know, and, and it's like no matter, it just depends on your your idea of time. And, um, but, I mean, we're trying to get there and, like, kind of dwell there is so that we can... Um, I guess cease the iterations of, you know, ignorance or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like to that end, what does this game or how does this game facilitate that sort of, I mean, I figure it only goes so far with the cards until you're actually like, moving on to something else but i mean I think, e even even if huh sir i think a, an avenue like the cards provide like a strike point in terms of uh being like something that you can tangibly hold and right. a kind of a commodity right 
so you can yeah, kind of kind of inject it into the commodical commodity spectacle as a as a sort of a bait. I think yeah, it's like it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a disguised artifact that, like, yeah, you want to kind of like trick them into it because. Well, trick is a strong word, but uh, well, I mean, not trick, but like you say, a bait. Like, uh, let's play a game, and then you're bringing them into something that they're not. Yeah, and the they idea didn't really sign up for. And I think uh, the, the idea was. Like, uh, sorry, sorry go ahead. You, you can go. Ahead. Okay, um, so. I just wrap it up. Uh, my thought is to uh, basically you don't stay with this these cards as is in terms of uh, like the the, the writing. Um, uh, but going back to my earlier idea about like it's being rewritten as a story arc, and the beauty of this is that you can make many stories here, so the appeal could actually range in many uh, different ways. Um, beyond ha beyond the idea as to how to do that. Don't, I don't. I don't know, but that would be my thought. Yeah, I mean, because because I mean, Portal Mountain facilitates it, its very existence. Its structure facilitates achieving its goal. Mm -hmm. But this is that structure. Kind of, this is, that huh? this is that structure. Right. This is that structure, but it's like, it, it, it's, 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 it's in a different medium. So like mm -hmm. it, it has, you know, it, it has differences, but it, it's the same, you know, I mean, it's basically. Almost like a, it's almost like a puzzle. Like you want to put it together. Yeah. And it's then definitely when a puzzle. you have it put together, it's like, it's falling apart again so so some of the idea behind portal mountain came from my thinking anybody played mist ever no i've seen it. what you mentioned it once and i looked it up ah, it's so hard to like that uh you were saying you were wanting to make a game that was like like mist please um what was it the, it would have been much easier to explain what um, Portal Mountain was if you had guys had actually uh, been familiar with it, because I could make a because it's a pretty big reference in my head for uh, how it all worked out. Um, but the idea was to sort of like have the scenic, um, you know, open-ended uh, quest uh, just through this mountain area right where the, you encounter these things and they're all puzzling and you're like and you know you'd like you'd want to somehow solve it visually and uh, i've had a whole bunch of visual like ideas and that i never could never really explain on telegram or anything i've, I've spoken to uh, a few of them with brian um but yeah like the whole idea was always stemmed from this thinking that it was a, a kind of a quest game where you solve find these pieces of, uh, of, of, a, of a narrative that's to put together into this ar artifact form. Right. No. And, 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 you know, Porter Mountain can, in the state it's in, I mean, it's not optimized for that, but if someone really dedicates themselves to playing it the way that it's been set up, which not many people have. And I mean, when I got in there, there, that structure wasn't there. Like the campfire obelisk, it wasn't like cemented. Um, but in the same way, like a, a big part of it is establishing, okay, like, you know, you have this landscape, which in this is initially the game with the cards like that's the idea that the person going in has and it's just like with the lobby you just like, have to make them look cool man yeah make them look cool but like the idea of the game being the game is like the idea of the lobby being you know like the entry point yeah the, lo like, the lobby something? facilitates the game room <laughs> Right. I found so, the cards helped with the concepts a lot, a lot better than like just trying to read like off of a sheet, like a list of like, well, here's like 
10 protocols that like, you know, like two or three days later, somebody asks you like, what was one of those? And it's like, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but if I have the cards, I do. Like I, I could just like yeah. look up one. Yeah. So do you think that it would be vital in the context of attempting to use this style of the game uh, to bring someone to a place like you know the lobby is the inner sanctum but it's just not realized as that you know like that's the that's the perceptual you want to like sorry um, are you asking whether um you want to explicitly tell them that one is the other well well i'm just asking how would that be what would be a good way to codify that into well, this? Because, um, I mean, I, I feel like you do tell them that. Like, well, you, you have hint, that tree. You hint at that, yes. Um, in the sense that, you know, like, you hint at the sense in saying that uh, once you make it to the campus, uh, you know, you've always actually been there. Once you make it to the academy, you know, you've just been always there. It's a different view of the same thing. Um, so there's, like, these hints that you've never actually going anywhere where as you're going somewhere um right um, it's it, it's a recontextualization of yeah and, and the, the 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 in telegram at least uh the main symbolic way to represent that is to not have a chat room for the inner chamber yeah like it's not a chat room it doesn't exist it, it doesn't exist as that that's like you talking to yourself um that's the yeah, metaphor definitely. being made um it doesn't mean it's not part of it but um you know like it's, it's a kind of like a double symbolic meaning in, in that what it, what it is and how to approach this not thing that's not a thing kind of a deal and it's like and once you're there um there's no other goal besides being there I mean, but when you're not there, the goal is to get there. Or, or maybe when you're there, there is no goals or ideologies or anything. I don't know, but I think I, I see what you mean. I find for me, it's almost like uh, maybe it's just like the way I am, but there's like usually at least like one point in the day where I feel like I've gotten like where I wanted to be, but then the rest of the point of the day is like, just like cycling through like I, I, I don't know how to explain it but like you know I go through like a lot of like low points and then like I'll get to a point where it's like like finally I've connected the way I wanted to do and like like stuff is more clear and I can think more clearly for like maybe a little bit and then like you know I'll just get tired and like have to go back to bed and like it'll start all over again but there's usually like one point or like maybe sometimes like two points during the day where I feel like I'm, I'm functioning at the level that I, I want to be at. Do, do you stumble into that on accident or is that something you kind of seek to embody throughout the day? It, it builds up. Yeah. Like I can definitely like I feel it building up. It's like it's, I've got to eat and then I've got to sleep and like there's like a list of things to do and then like it gets yeah. to a point where, like, yeah, so, so, it so like, familiar. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, sometimes so, so I'll familiar, be familiar, like, man. So, is that something that we should be writing down? Because, I mean, it's not. I, I'm, I'm the way I saw the gameplay was, you know, you're writing down fresh cards, uh, but. Is the game expected to be played? Okay, guy comes up. I'm really wanting to like play this game with people because like I'm going to Oregon in a month to universities and festivals and things, and I would like to just be able to, hey, check this game out and uh, and see where it goes. But I mean, would it be expected to be possible where you just have like a pre-made card? And you just lay it down and like what like talk about what it is and what it means or yeah yep are you expecting the other person to so, lay down a card it's like we haven't got into 
there, there's even more uh, core, there's more core uh, protocols that I, <clears throat> that I just uh, have been reminded of. Um, so I'm thinking about the um, execution protocol, the commitment protocol, the protocol protocol, and the constraint protocol, uh, the program protocol, and the concept protocol. So, <laughs> so those are all based off triad protocol. Basically, that's a um, iterating the the the, the uh, temperament triads and their their kind of perspectives. Um, so I'm thinking like um, like if I were to take like usually for me I put red as a, that's my um, call it devotional triad but it's that's my concrete that's what I like for concrete so if I put a red card down and let's I don't know uh, actually actually I use yellow for a commitment let me try that so as a commitment um, and I kind of got into this with Corey but um, so I'm writing a project right now. This is, this is a hyperstitious object of something that doesn't exactly exist right now. And it's, uh, the, the card game. So the game, the game, I'll write that in the top left there. And now this represents my commitment to a certain object becoming, uh, manifesting. And that, that includes the rules and the development and what, like what we're doing right now and meet up meetings. Um, so, um, so meetings, I'm just writing meetings somewhere else on that card, um, rule development, rule dev, um, and, uh, organizing my own deck, organizing my deck okay so so this this for me is concrete this is um, this is a card representing my commitment to the game to the game that we're currently uh, playing and what I've done is just reference a few other you could say objects like this meeting that we're in right now to me it's an object um, and and it's something that you know, like before it started, I was wondering, like, you know, how how's it going to go, or what what's uh, what what has to be in place for it to work properly, like uh, setting up the live stream and stuff like that. Um, so this also this rule development. Uh, so like the rule set. Like let's say the core. I'll just blank core. I'll write core beside rule dev. Um, so a core set of rules, that's what I need. I need this object. I need meeting objects. I need my deck to be organized. So I guess my own deck. So just my deck. I don't need to say organizing, but my deck. Um, so without actually giving you the commitment protocol yet, you can see here how a card has been used to represent something that I am committed to, right? And so I can walk up and share this to you and I would say, uh, you guys should have this card too, because then the game is going to appear. The game will exist. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me. To me, it like kind of looks like almost like the outline of like project or like yeah, it's almost like a to do list or the start of a to do list. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta remember that this isn't uh, this isn't the only card given to that same person. Otherwise, it would uh, make no sense. Um, it's in the context, right? right? So of other cards. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I do. I don't think I really have any development yet on those that particular protocol set, which is basically core. Well, you you have a little bit uh, in terms of if this is the game you're playing, and if you're using a deck of cards, then this is how you'd use them. That's kind of rules yeah no i mean like explicit like having a card for each uh protocol for the execution protocol the commitment protocol etc mm. the protocol protocol 
Yeah. Um, so that's kind of something that we haven't got into yet. And the reason I brought that up was because Eon's talking about um, what to what you can concretely do with this game when you meet up with somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I would say. So we've only gotten we've only started playing like a small slice of this game. Like the, we've only laid out protocols. We haven't done anything with uh, scheduling uh, yeah. or, or or arranging commitments. Yeah, I have uh, I have a lot of ideas on that topic actually. Um, that I'd like to um, talk to you as uh, this is developing, mm -hmm. um, primarily from a pers like like my experience in uh, development specifically is uh, very much in line with uh, development of protocols in general. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. And so. I'd like to uh, have you take a look at that process um, and see how it jive, uh, how it, uh, yeah, how it works. Cool. And <clears throat> go from there. Like, uh, it, it, it has a tendency of like, you know, um, outlining the issue, outlining uh, the process that's gonna take care of that issue, outlining the success, the failure, I outline like, all the different uh, tech check boxes that you know if it's done or not. Um, uh, a lot of regr regression kind of like uh, um, testing and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that process is, that process, why it's important I think is because it has a lot of that feedback um, in terms of uh, what it features uh, into itself. Um, for instance, like if you're scheduled to do specific tasks today, but those tasks and, and then some tasks tomorrow, but the tasks today uh, change what happens tomorrow. Yeah. You know, like that changes the schedule that there's like a feedback loop going on mm -hmm. and there's like all of the features that we would want, like feedback iteration and just, yeah. So from what I'm hearing, I've, I've kind of had to step away for just a moment, but it sounded like are, are you attempting to use the game to mediate like guild dynamics? Like yeah. shares and... It would be a form of mediation, yeah. For, so, like the Portal Mountain and Dashboard and all of that would be another. So uh, it, it's expected to just like keep doing this like every time, like handshake protocol and then like scheduling feedback and then like altering well there's scheduling. another there's another thing is that these things get bootstrapped as well you you just you know when you um when you meet up with a friend you know that you have to catch up right and so you, you automatically start doing that um, so you don't necessarily need to go through all of these all the time like okay we're on handshake now now we're going to do a strike point um they I, ideally they should they should get kind of internalized and then become second nature and that's that's kind of essentially membership in the in the behavior um, there was a point that I wanted uh, that I wanted to make um, it's that um, so this game yes can basically exist in your head and we're saying that it, it it does we're saying this is the game of life that's already in your head and we're trying to create um externalized uh memory essentially this is a, a a media for externalized memory that's what these protocols are for and we we do this because we have language because we have symbols and we have media and we're already um we are already doing that kind of stuff anyways writing books um messages and whatnot um so these cards can you could say they exist in your head kind of like before they're even written down um it's just that when you want to try and communicate with somebody else um things have to be expressed in symbolic form one way or another you're going down the stack and then you're coming all the way back up and hopefully you bootstrap it properly um, 
Well said. Seems like the margin well for error is like really high when it comes to bootstrapping with mm -hmm. another it, person. It's it's a uh, it's a um, it's a process that has a risk. Um, right, the hostility risk, for instance. Um, and it's uh, it, it's it's not a process that you do like the reward isn't in the in the success in the success of you know like infecting somebody with this uh, with this game. The successes in uh, you yourself haven't found this game to be useful to cons to play it one way or another with uh, all of your unsuspecting victims. <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Right? Like, you're the one going to be playing it. The uh, people that are going to be playing it with you explicitly are, are people that have caught on already. You know? They've, they've, picked it, they've put it together. Like, you could drop the explicit hints, too, in the form of these cards, for instance, too. You could teach somebody explicitly if they want to. But, you know something shoving somebody down somebody's brain is going to be a far more difficult ordeal than simply playing it um by essentially leading by example so, does that cover it so brian this this addition is sort of like altering the game to me because i was unaware that it was like extended beyond anything besides like getting online right um, right right and that's the core though but then what do you do with that in and you're saying like there's no goal after that well that it, it it's life itself living being alive um lincoln what are you doing right and my Sorry. initial assumption was at that point you're dropping Sorry. the car completely but yeah no, you don't drop it. That's where life begins. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But then that also kind of, it kind of paints like getting online is like this very, something that's like very introductory and like easy to do. But I feel like even that is. Well, See, this is going to be a constant, constant issue. These core protocols and um, helping people on to um, embark and helping them through their own journey of increasing coherence. That's something that never, that never ends. And there will always be different, different people. Even yourself, from from day to day, or or even hour to hour, can feel um, like Vicky was saying. Like you, sometimes you're feeling like on the ball like you're feeling like like you got it going but then you get tired or whatever and it's like things need to be taken care of it's like that the body is needs rest and and there's the constant force of entropy um, so the core is something that we see happening all the time all around and and when we can help raise people up into membership in the guild um, that's when things uh, when we have that's when we begin to have basically friends that we can really uh, rely on, like to to be to be functioning uh, um, in an in a coherent way, um, not hurting. In other words, like um, not hurting things, not hurting themselves, or at least being able to um, <clears throat> I guess being able to do that feedback process. So being aware of the fact that everything is in nothing's in a perfect state um, but we can start taking care of anything we want anywhere we see a problem in our life we can start taking care of it and that's kind of what it means to be a member uh, it's, it's i don't want to say it essentially but um, that's what happens when you become a member you, you start looking around and things uh, seeing what what can be taken care of hmm. okay as opposed to just the initial because you know I, I feel like this is um it's sort of like the post 
enlightenment life or something like that i don't i don't know if that's the right term to use but well, i would say if, if if enlightenment was a graded thing then sure um uh, the, 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 the other, the um, one defining factor of membership that I can think of that's also relevant is, is that you, um, this is a point in which you, you stop just noticing your own participation element of the guild. It's, it's where you start to actually see others, you know, who would be members as well or participants. You start to see the distinction in, in, in people. And um, and so you're able to not only now you're not only on a level of working with yourself, but you're also now are learning to navigate the same landscape with somebody else, right? Um, at least uh, in theory, um, that's that that should be mm -hmm. part of the um, of the, the characteristics of what makes one a member versus a mere participant. Right. Participant hasn't made that leap uh, where. Um, they're thinking about uh, the, the other's journey. They are more inclined to think about, um, they, sh they can think about it like theoretically, right? It's not like impossible. But what I mean is that they don't have a sense of it. Um, and they wouldn't have necessarily the understanding of how to relate that kind of stuff um, uh, coherently. And uh, yeah, that that's, that's one. That's another way to really look at the distinction between the two. I yeah. see. That's or that's I how I felt too. Hmm? That's how I felt too when I um, when uh, when I became a member <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> uh, I suddenly I suddenly felt the suffering of like the world. Like I is as if I was all the other people who are and just seeing into those lives. That was a huge part of it for me. Well, and, and you have that aspect, but then there's, I feel like there's this aspect of, let me see, um, when it's not explicit, like the meta of like the semi arbitrary importance of like the semantics of the narrative uh like when you're kind of just in your own narrative but like in a very elevated place in that self-narrative and then you're kind of seeing individuals in relation to yourself and there's empathy but there's also this uh it, it's like a assumption that you know some kind of truth and they don't you know right so, and i feel like there's 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 a threshold between being in that and then go getting to the point where it's like it, it's about not putting your truth onto someone else and like oh you need to see things my way and then you'll elevate, but we need to share and translate terms with each other. You and must then, convert. You yes. must convert. Yes, I see what you're getting at, uh, Eon. And it's kind of like where people are stuck in a box in the first place. But once you truly self-reference, that self-reference doesn't end at your own body. That goes out in the, into the environment, into others, and you realize that there are others having on a journey similar to yours, except they have completely different experience. But in the in the um, but they're 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 also having their own their own conscious experience, and I think that it sounds dumb. I guess that that people wouldn't wouldn't be really acknowledging that, but I, I think that that's kind of that solipsism is, is I think, a factor uh, of participation. Solipsism. Yeah. It's like where you, you kind of, you operate as if you are the only, you are the only consciousness, you're the only mind that, that can ever be proven to exist. Therefore, the others are like, just whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, you're, you're on, you're on it. Just... 
that's not only the case. That's the uh, that's the encouraged case. Mm -hmm. um, that this this is the siloing effect. This is the siloing effect of like uh, the um, rigidity of the the whole idea or deal. Um, yeah, basically it it it. it it prefers numbers, so we're all just numbers. Mm -hmm. Therefore, silos. It's not complicated, but I don't want to get into it. Like it'll take forever to discuss. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, are we uh, doing any more with like uh, the Minecraft part oh, of the? Minecraft? I, I have uh, no ability to join still. How is that possible? Mine thing. PS4, man, it's awesome. Yeah, so your PS4, it should work. I know it should. In theory, it should, every, it should be all tickety boo, but it's <laughs> not working. And uh, and uh, what can I say? When, when did Minecraft become part of the conversation? I think I missed it. <laughs> when, when Brian decided to create Portal Mountain in Minecraft. <laughs> oh, he did. Awesome. You have like a saving? Fun. Well, it's been more Vicky doing. She's been doing a lot of the hard work, like in down in the mines. Like I just built some wall out of all the cobblestone that she mined. <laughs> so is this like in survival mode? Yeah. Yeah. So the idea was that that we're we're using it for creating memory palaces, essentially. And you you have like an actual like there's shit being built that's. So far. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, so far it's just the uh, the Minecraft archetype itself. Uh, in other words, we are bootstrapping ourselves into the Minecraft environment by doing the things that we need to do to have a stable Minecraft life before we go ahead and, and actually build other stuff. Well, I saw your video. I was like, how I used Minecraft oh, yeah. for solving the problems or some shit. I was like, why is he playing Minecraft? What is happening here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, what man. is the context of it? I've seen you playing with pictures and stuff. And... Yeah. Yeah, I just, I've been, I went in so many directions the last few weeks. I kind of feel like I need to kind of put my feet back on the ground and just get rest and, you know, all the areas of concern and all that. Uh, but it's been good. Like, I'm really, really happy about this live streaming stuff. Like, I think that's really, really cool. Um, and yeah, that I will be continuing that portal mountain stuff uh we will be uh through through the next couple months at least like i want to at least um see how far we can get in uh recreating portal mountain and probably a number of different um memory palace uh walk walks or whatever however you would call it palaces rooms. yeah I think, a, I think there's a lot of like pro like potential application for like the memory palace like and i guess it doesn't necessarily have to be a minecraft or anything it could even just be like stuff that's like i guess like like art that we share yeah could go into it yeah mm -hmm. i mean that, that's a okay. good avenue because it's so like it, it's pretty accessible yep and, you don't have um, it do you Ian? no I, I have no consoles or anything yeah i don't even have my computers at the moment oh yeah yeah i see i see i see i am completely i'm i mean i'm about to start living in a van in oregon hmm. with somebody else so it's not even oh, my that's van that's so it's about to get uh pretty basic yeah but i need it because like like i was saying like the fucking conglomeration of dopamine feedback loops that are that i've like right. fallen into yeah um, like technologically with like uh youtube and then like different uh games and shit and Mm -hmm. And then more like in the, I mean, it's, it's just, it's gotten, it's gotten almost out of control, basically right. out of control, but some semblance of like, really like coming back to, this is why it excited me so much was 
because like you kind of get into that little hole and it's like you know because you're not playing a game you're not you know you're sort of like being played by someone else's game mm-hmm. and then um maybe like deterritorialization is a is a word that could be used there but you know getting that taste and like okay I, I, I need I need some community and I need um some purpose sort of like re-injected even if it's you know yeah I, I get what you're saying it's almost like yeah like taking yourself back as a territory yeah yeah exactly like uh, yeah, and and purpose is a huge part of that. Just some sense of it, because I had just gotten completely like, I, I kind of started focusing my efforts on the complete suppression of meaning, and then I just kind of entered into this nihilistic consumer with no mm. with no direction. Yeah. It could be like a protective mechanism too. Like I find myself, I kind of waver back and forth into productive and non-productive things. I don't know. It's because I too intense sometimes. Thirty-five be a dollar and nine cents a pound. Nine cents a pound. A dollar and nine cents a pound. Dollar nine cents a pound. Yes. All right. Cool. So I need to get to bed. <laughs> I have like two time? hours to sleep before work. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, we better take care of that. Yeah, that sucks. It's a twelve hour shift. Oh boy. Did you get sleep today though? Uh no, but I could sleep at work a little bit. I have like a little <laughs> cushion. I can sleep at a desk. Okay, okay. All right, priorities though. Right? It's, only being, it's only security, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, it's cool. good talking to you guys. Well, yeah, you too. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. All right, all right, all right. Um, game the game. Are we going to continue with anything at all? I think Eon said that he was um, available until now. So, and that was hours ago. So I don't know if he's gonna be busy or if he's around, but uh, we can we can keep it going. Uh, no, I think I'd like to uh, finish. Call it yeah. quits. Okay. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a lot to it's a lot of ground covered. Yeah. I just added another card, like a to do card. This is like a schedule. This is mm-hmm. I don't know how to make this protocol. meeting like stop. What do I Oh um Oh stop um, video. There's okay. a there's a leave meeting. Or just hit um, the X okay. X in the top right. <laughs> oh you can't leave. <laughs> oh she's gone. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So just to kind of iterate a bit further on this, this would be like to do, I would make like a to do protocol. But this is this being a red card is, is, is um, execution. For me, that's, that's the, um, the model schema. Red execution, the yellow yeah. commitment. Yeah. So right, so here, so that we have, um, so as far as yellow commitment, commitment to the game, and I put here meetings, the rules, deck, um, but also within execution, I have this meeting on Sunday with all these people from this time to this time. This is like, this yeah, is concrete. Part. This is an element of, of execution, right? Yeah, it's concrete Yeah. versus the abstract. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and even though we're in the, the, the devotional triad here, the concrete triad, Within that triad, we have concrete, abstract, and then oh, yeah. our, nar- our narrative unfolding. Mm-hmm. So, how often do you refer? Because you said Zettelkasten, and looking into that, it sounds like 
I mean, basically, the game here is Zettel casting. Is kind of what it sounds like. Beyond beyond the bootstrapping and you know the the glass bead function of. Because I, I mean, have to look at that again. I've I read about the Zettel casting in like I don't know a year, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, and I only spent like a minute reading it. Well, what what um, caused you to, to call it that? Um, really, it's it's because this that's what I called this box. Uh, apparently, oh. it's a collection is a collection of these mind map cards is called a Zettelkasten. I don't know. That's <laughs> your, your box is very shiny. I know. Thank you. So get some <laughs> cool angles on it. Yeah, that is. Uh, it's very magical. That's why. That's why I did that. It's for added yes, magic. It has, it has magic protocols inside. <laughs> wow! Wow! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's your it's your brain on paper. Yeah, that's but, why it has to look um, like that. Like my 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 kind of idea initially was like uh, like. I guess he got busy. Dion is busy. Or he's muted for whatever reason. Yeah, I have my reasons too. I have uh, I have to do things for someone who cannot do it for themselves. All right, I'm going to mute too. Still there, Ian? Hello, can anyone hear me? Hey, yeah, I'm here. Oh, were you were you not able to hear me before? No, not till just now. Oh, I, shit. Were you doing like a really long monologue? 
<laughs> well, I was just like, I was like, hello, hello, hello. And, oh. Because and, I had gotten a phone call and like it switched the mic to some, it happens on Discord sometimes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because he like just went trying, mute. Yeah, like even though on my screen it was unmuted, like the microphone was set to the phone or I don't fucking know. Disconnecting and reconnecting solved it. I see, I see. It is the universal fixer cool. of all things. Yeah, so I was just thinking about like a point about this this game. Like, did did you see the those two cards that I made there, Eon, or the yellow and the red one? I see the one that says the game with uh, core meetings and then your deck. Yeah, so the yellow one and then two red ones, I think. Right? I'm just. I mean, yes, thing. I can I can see them on the screen. Good. I mean, yeah, so so I added those to kind of give an example, just to kind of expand the the dimensions of the game, because we didn't go into any of this with Corey, and and this is so you're supposed to be able to ma map your mind with this, right? Like, and and this is this red and yellow here is more like the concrete, um, like this is you know the the devotional triad, uh, execution, commitment, and narrative, right? Right. So that's what these are to kind of give a, um, like just a small view into a, a little bit of what what those cards might be like, and and like I said, I may share a card like this yellow one. I might share it with you, uh, if I think that you may want to also work on this. So you would you would make a copy of that card if you wanted to, and maybe on the back you would write like the list of people who have that card, right? So who you know are also trying to work on that project. And so when you have a, a proper technological stack, uh, this kind of stuff can be done automatically. And that's kind of like, that's the dashboard software. Um, so you're able to pull people together and synchronize your uh, what you're committing to. So synchronize objectives or projects. And, um, you're also able to organize your own schedule of how you're dealing with those commitments. And to put this in the, in a perspective of the wider game, um, aside from, aside from core, aside from the core and aside from this like kind of spiritual alignment or like self-reference learning about that kind of stuff, um, of all, all of the problems in the world, they all have environments of behavior. Um, they all have factors and things that 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 um, that continue to go out of sync and and get um, uh, decayed, like it start to take on entropy. And so, no matter what system it is, they all have to be maintained. And not doing so is is basically um, that is death. So we need to introduce life into all these systems, these various systems of, of civilization, of humanity, of all these different areas of, of behavior. And what an externalized uh, representation system like this does is it allows you to, to, um, to within your concrete schedule, to learn about something or to, like, let's say you've, you've gone to school for something and then you know um, you know certain systems very well, but you want to be able to teach other people. So this is about converging upon behavior. So if you if you uh, figure out how to, I don't know, even just if you can figure out how to how to how to uh, how to build your own accountability to your own schedule, like there there are all kinds of uh, different, um, I guess systems you could use for that or. Uh, different ways of thinking about it and essentially you could write it down in this kind of a card format and then use that as bootstrapping material to help other people understand that particular area of behavior so that that is basically it i'm like that that's kind of my perspective from this is is it doesn't matter what you're what you're doing like all these people with all these political uh, solutions so to speak or whatever like how can people behave better to make things better like aside from just telling others what they need to be doing politically 
like as in a top down like the state needs to manage this or the state needs to enforce this rule and so what you're implying is that you can't even begin to address that realm of activity until yeah. this core of like feedback handshake yeah. uh bootstrap which mm -hmm. is itself. well that's that's what addresses that right well, like that feedback is what addresses that in the first place so yeah the you, it's just, it's it's not possible without yep yeah exactly how do you bootstrap behavior you take material and then and you bootstrap it but you have to know what you're doing you have to know what feedback is and not just know what it is but like be able to do it at a membership level like taking in other words taking responsibility for the own for your own navigation of of the world around you as opposed to simply reacting like a pinball in a machine to all these commands and constraints i really hate that i like had to walk away for a minute while you were talking about that um <laughs> well there's always the youtube yes like, if you have to... questions or whatever like so yeah the last thing i, I walked in on was i mean the, the the pinball metaphor which i mean yes we're all trying to be pinball wizards you know uh-huh yeah, and, taking uh, taking control, like of or taking responsibility for your for your own uh, for the improvement of your own models. Right, and and something that I would like to, I don't know if y'all already talked about that, but I know that you have before because we've been to this pinball. Mm -hmm. But a part of not being a pinball in the machine, a a part of that is uh being the machine itself yeah is that oh thank you so so we have this element of you know i mean we have we have that we have this practical element that i think has been more discussed after you know, after this core is established to, to bootstrap the ability to uh do these issues and like you know maintain proper activities in the context of proper environments and all that to kind of stave in uh, uh to achieve like negentropy mm -hmm. but do we need a protocol to because uh, amongst that, that that's that's one aspect like you have to have like the mythology and like the mechanics of how you interpret yourself mythologically and how important is that to because i mean is it possible to not be a pinball if you can't see yourself as anything but a pinball hmm. um, so and so how do we facilitate using this because because i mean you know, like you say, we have different temperaments, mm -hmm. and mine goes into the more devotional, which is which is more isomorphic with the narrative right. of like to have the proper perspective on because everyone's kind of got their own idea. Like, okay, we need to do this to do, but without the proper perspective, the 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 width of perspective to like encompass the system that you're trying to maintain i think a, a big part of that is like what am i in relation to yeah. this system yeah yeah you're right and then a part of that is like how do we get i feel like you'd have to get you'd have to achieve that in the core as well so once you you know once you're out of the core i mean you said the core is always there like operating it's like yeah. a it's like a conglomerate of protocols i think genia would probably be able to chime in on this a lot a lot better but as far as like identity goes um i feel like when you hit membership that that like we we're talking about the box like being stuck in a box and not seeing the outside um 
identities themselves kind of trap you in that in that way um, if you're not if you're not using the identity but it's using you in other words yeah for sure um, so I have a feeling like we've got that covered but I don't know if Jania can can speak to that as far as the, the sorry, you, had a, you have a feeling what sorry um, like as far as the journey of increasing coherence and as well as your identity like yeah how you're feeling like um, what your place is in the world, like your relationship yeah. to the environment, like how so, can we represent that in this card system or is that just simply a factor of, of coherence? What will happen is, is that uh, you won't find the neat little loop that we, you, we uh, were able to uh, utilize for this. Um, Cause as soon as you break out into this categorical thinking, yeah, um, that's not overlaid you kind of uh, start breaking the fractal right, right. of it all. So, but and still, like, it, it's just, it just becomes this, this morphic growth thing that just right. doesn't stop. <laughs> but if you include, it, it, it's like with Portal Mountain, like, you're including the levels of coherence. So, I mean, you're, okay. you're categorizing them and you're categorizing let me, uh, the let me, locations. Let me qualify that better. Um, in order to uh, make use of it from a model perspective of things like identity, it has to be tr transient. Like, it can't... Um, it has to be what? Transient? Tran transient, yeah. Yeah. Like, like ever shifting in, in relation to yeah it has to be or? like it, yeah it has to like relate to this at that time it's it's not like it's innate nature or any of that kind of thing right it's um yeah that's that's the main uh that's that's the bridge as long as so, the, the the transience is uh acknowledged it's no problem to uh, utilize things like identities and whatnot. And that's how you're going to be able to actually make sense to people um, talking yep. about this stuff. You're not going to be able to uh, just jump into terminology without any um, anch anchoring and something that's more concrete to them. Cause, cause it, it's a provisional tool. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep, exactly. Um, so, but, but is it, is it assumed that, someone who plays this game with you and kind of is it just expected that that realization that that identity itself is just like a provisional tool to like help you see things in certain ways that will benefit you you know however it needs like you know if you see yourself as a pinball then you're you know, your environment is defined by that. And then, you know, mm -hmm. you're not seeing points. You're not seeing high scores. You're just kind of seeing like collision, you know? Hmm. I think like the, the pinball identifier or whatever, I think would be more used to like, as an analogy to, to be to, for a member to be speaking or a member or above to be speaking to a participant when trying to explain uh, that kind of self-referent self-referent uh, navigation, I, th I think. Um, the it's really pinball hidden. in the machine really refers to how um, uh, the the manipulation of the the manipulation of isomorphism and dysmorphism play into pleasure and pain thereby driving the um the uh, whole proximity complex uh in, in terms of right. uh, what it will or will not assume as uh, itself or uh, as being a part of or, or being um part mm -hmm. of it like all of these different variations and of course the counterparts and the, the sympathetic ones that's how we and, use it yeah yeah, and uh, being in the pinball, the, being in the machine, really is like a, as, as a picture of uh, how helpless the ball is. First of all, um, uh, in relation to that machine, and secondly, that um, um, that right it. Ex it, it it sort of gives uh, the 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 uh, this 
it also mechanizes your sense of self into becoming artificial, right? Um, it makes it so that you are one of those objects that this machine is bouncing around, and therefore, like, it, you're kind of you're you're identifying with this ball, uh, so to speak, like in the metaphor. Right. Um, so yeah. it has like, like this, the existence. Yeah, so that's oh, what it's really. I, I was just going to say the existence of it also you know, implies like just the fact that it exists as that sort of dichotomy machine and pinball. I mean, that's the mythology. So it sort of implies that like hmm. a, a flip can occur, you know, and, and you could, you could say any sort of analogy. Um, like I think someone can't inhabit a identity that isn't already present in their mythology somewhere, you know, hmm. in, in some relative elevated or, you know, downward position. Like, you know, this guy over here is like, oh, you are the universe uh, experiencing yourself subjectively, the Bill Hicks thing. Like, the spaghetti man um, thing. Well, I mean, that, I was just saying that's what Bill Hicks says. <laughs> yeah. On the, yeah. Now there's a meme about that. It's some guy like covered um, in spaghetti, and that's the caption. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. <laughs> like, I've not seen that one. That's, that sounds surreal. <laughs> but my thing is like, okay, so uh, I'm trying to make it concrete. Like, say. Because like my thing is a lot of to just really bring into this concrete room. Like say you're talking to a Protestant Christian that they're like the, the, the mythology and the mimetic artifacts that sort of surround them and define them yeah. preclude their ability to kind of be the author of their own story and to like um, it, it kind of precludes that sort of elevation of identification because mm -hmm. it's set in stone right there. Like you can never actually be, you know, the one you can never be like um, at this level of this thing that you're like. Right. You know? In some ways that's a protection though as well. That's a protection mechanism because if anybody goes around saying I am God, for one, they're they're improperly identifying, and and they're going to be killed, anyways, right? So you can look at it that way. And I wouldn't say that 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 they're they're right. Uh, what's in their head is precluding uh, membership in the kingdom of God. Um, um, many, from my experience, anyways, a few people that I've found in my uh, within my network uh, definitely do have that. Uh, that membership kind of flair, but then, like you're right, they get kind of bogged down sometimes in the in the cultural aspects of it. Like they can't they can't really speak or talk about what they want to, how they want to, with other Christians who are still part like I say merely participating. <clears throat> right, and I mean a, a part of. Like if and if you go beyond that cultural my, my uh, milieu or whatever the word is, if you if you and if you kind of dive into like the realms outside of like what the Nicaea Convention dictated was appropriate, like there's so much more culture and mythology in like the Gnostic texts and you know uh, Kabbalism and things like that, and they all can kind of synthesize and give someone this understanding of you know you're not just because like that's the initial assumption like you're you know a, a, some created being that has a soul whose sole purpose is to follow the directions of this of the thing that created you and to, you know what i'm saying like it's very much yeah. like 
you well, first come into PM and it's like, okay, here's the instructions, here's program zero. But you, you don't, and then they give you this fiat, like, well, what he says is what we need to do because yeah, what he says defines what goodness is. But then, you know, if, if you're able to get, I, I do feel like there's, there's like a beyond that point where mm -hmm. you're kind of seeing like, oh, like God created me, but I created God. Like you're co-creating each other and um, mm -hmm. your relationship, like, yeah. your, your relationship can, and, and I mean, and, and if you branch into like Hindu philosophy, there's a lot of, I mean, it's very much, you're very much able to get to a point where you're like, I am God, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's it's not it's not nearly as big a deal. They're not going to like kill you for it, um, right? Yeah, and it does. It, that's kind of like <clears throat> art has been one of our critiques, I guess, of that, is, and where like identifying with something like that's you still haven't let go into some some regards. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in so much as you're identifying with, I mean. Okay. Okay. So, so, so you're you getting there kind of, kind of opens the door a bit more. So, it opens it up into. Or, or is our goal here to. Like, strike down, the, ontological assumptions of identity. You know, is that the? I'm gonna bring trans trans trans. The fact that it's transient and back into this that the problem that um for instance that uh you're highlighting is that any identification with uh with being the deity is 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 uh is and it's it becomes its own obstacle um in that it becomes fixed um and the experiential world is anything but right mm -hmm. So you're never actually going to experience the kind of fixity that you're claiming to be, and so you're kind of caught in in a very uh, you're, you're you're not in a not in a lie, but in a um, you're 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 caught in a in, in a delusion. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's definitely a delusion, but is it not also a delusion that? I mean, our initial assumption. Is it what? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'm just. I, I feel like you, you have two delusions. One is like more shared, like relatable. Yeah. And maybe that's the point. Like. But it's the same like delusion. A master Actually, the same have, delusion and to, to, um, attributed to two different things. Right. It's the same delusion, but what you're arguing, in my interpretation, is that the mastery is in the devotional realm is to have the transience of the idea of identity such that, you know, you can be what you need to be amongst the people that you're relating to. Yeah. Like, yeah. You that's know, correct. if you're, if you're in a group of people, because sometimes there are groups of people who all think that they're divine gods. And if, if you walk up to them and you're just a person, you can't interact with them in uh in any productive way but if you can elevate your identity and then um to such a way that they see you the way that they see themselves mm -hmm. then you can start doing something together but yeah. regardless this transience of identification how is one to Kind of so, like facilitate that occurring in someone else. Let's let okay. Let, well, I don't know about someone else, but I can give you examples of uh, of how to think about it, and maybe that, ourselves. that'll make that might give you an idea of how I to mean, approach other people. This is people. linchpin. So this is yeah. feedback protocol. Like, this is so, apply linchpin so, to your own identity. So Ian, um, to 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 uh, more concretely give you this idea. Um, from uh, you wake up every single morning. Are you the the exact same person, or are you um, 
like is there some some kind of a nuance to that you know like that's a simple one um sure there's like uh you know is that hypothetical or no just in general like are, are, you, are you asking me or is this hypothetical I, i'm illustrating it, i'm demonstrating it in action so that it's easier to relay it to people um the idea being of course is that uh even if even if you were to argue that it's the same body and all of that stuff right um and the same person with the same memories well e even even on that on the on the lower scale you sorry on a higher scale what you see sorry lower scale if what you see is that the person that woke up yesterday woke up without the experiences than the person that woke up today right that's just like a really really basic um down to uh, earth uh, way of uh, demonstrating the difference just between yesterday and today in one person so there's still a difference in that person right like it's not the same same person a lot of similarities for sure but to state that it's the same it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a claim that can't be substantiated right so take that to its extreme Right, and 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 that happens every, to everything and every to, to everything, every idea, every um, every nuance about every idea, every nuance about every nuance about every idea, and so on and so forth. Um, this sort of shifting around, this sort of shimmering around of uh, of this uh, inter interaction is is always uh, in motion. Right. So. Like dependent origination comes to mind when you're speaking of origination that we're dependent. <laughs> yes. Um, I didn't know you had that many because I know there's one that's not on the screen. There's one below me, one one above her, and one yeah eating. Yeah, one older one that likes to. Play with the yeah, he's, he's nine. <laughs> he's already nine. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's insane, actually. Um, so yeah, yeah well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm smelling what you're stepping in. I'm just like, in what uh, should that be incorporated into this? playing around with index cards and if so because like, is that something that you know we want to facilitate that that transience this comes back to coherence protocol so you're going to be able to play this game with participants like with with core participants um, and in other words like i could use this game I could figure out, or I could um, figure out how to represent my knowledge about shop or woodworking or something, and then I could use that to bootstrap the behavior within somebody else. And it doesn't matter what they think about their own identity; they're merely following directions. They're participating, and they may achieve membership in shop, like you could say. Um, the core is kind of, in some ways, aside from that fact, but. Um, mm, because there's, there's an there's an intuitive aspect to feedback because we do learn from our mistakes right that's kind of that's kind of the idea behind it um, so a lot of this can happen without getting into that core Yeah, okay. I, I'd say the core and, uh, is always explicit towards uh, mastery rather than, say, day-to-day um, -day membership, even. Well, I mean, and, and, and mastery is... I mean, it's never hidden. Identity as well. I mean, you have to identify yourself as a master or, or, oh. or identify your actions as... No, what I mean is that you tend to just put things in those terms. You you lost me on that one, Brian. Can you can you elucidate? Uh, not really. I don't know. Jenny is kind of look. He looks like he's busy. 
seems to be. I get, yeah, it does. Uh, I <laughs> I get what you were saying. I get what you were saying that. Yeah. Yeah, a so, person's identity doesn't matter, or, or their idea of that if 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 they're a participant that you are trying to. So uh, what I mean is that that something like the cards idea that Brian came up with wouldn't occur to somebody who isn't uh, hasn't uh, been around um, and has been able to articulate this to others for uh, intuitively to some for some time. Right. The fact that you're like, even getting involved in the cars and uh, um, yourself uh, just probably means that you seeing things on that on this on the scale um, is is some is it, it is easier for somebody like you because you've been around us like this uh, um, the Pearl Mountain for so long and all of these kinds of things, right? Like even ex your exposure level and your ability to sort of click with uh, the terminology helps in this um, somebody who's not familiar with the terminology is not necessarily going to be helped by a bunch of cards that express them right um, that's what I'm so, saying like you can't just like uh, start giving them like shoving definitions down the throat so here's where I was saying and it, it uh, those kinds of cards would have to have their own translation into different uh, temperaments so like this particular set is extremely academic in nature, right? It's it's very very like diagramic and um, just drawing all well, of the model speak. right? And um, the game itself is is the game itself the la the process of going through the game is the pragmatic part of it, um, and uh, the the uh, outcome of it, it would be the narrative. Um, I thought so what if you attempt to play this and instead of like drawing out your own cards is it possible do you think uh, whoever's listening to like ask the, ask the participant okay like uh, you know, lay down some aspects of your mythology, your narrative, your idea of what's going on and like sort of leverage that and arrange it into a bootstrap. Right. Through like translation or like kind of putting the ball more in their court because you, you know, I mean, if it's just like, oh, play this game and then like, you know, this is this, that is that. You're like, you're just laying out uh, definitions. I mean, there's got to be a some way that. I hmm. think I think your intuition. Or does it right. have to be? I think uh, your intuition is it's right. Hard, it's hard for me to get it. You probably want to, of course, be um, sensing out where other people are at, especially when when you're talking about the core, or in other words, like traditional spiritual concepts or whatever, um, in order at least even to translate. Like, what is your, you, you kind of need to know, like, what is your spiritual upbringing if you want to talk about spiritual stuff, right? And then you'll you'll be able to see like how much do they actually know about certain concepts, uh, like for example, um, the Christian concept of being saved, right? That that's equivalency to uh, membership in the guild. Um, and to to know that, then you can use your your knowledge of the model to to help uh, to help them explore uh, what it what it actually means like in their life and, and to look at their experience. Like, cause you want to facilitate, cause I, I feel like being saved, a lot of people have like this very service level, spectacular yep. understanding that is not really any kind of understanding, but if you can facilitate them to see correspondence yep. uh, along, you know, a fractal of different tiers of understanding, then bam it's like oh it means this it means this it means this yeah and now 
it means seven different things in seven different ways. And, uh, and then you can actually work with it instead of like, ask Jesus into your heart and be saved. Like it's so, it's yeah. so like nobody understands what they're even meaning when they say yeah. that. It's just pure parroting. Yeah. That's, that's participant but, participation. Yeah. So it's like, what can we get this core to look like? Like I, like, I, hmm. I would maybe as, maybe as an exercise, we would like to try out some other time or something like, okay, I, I'm going to be this guy, this model or like, cause you know, we want to be able to, you know, yeah. if someone's a Christian or something or a Buddhist or, I mean, you know, we right, almost right? did that project. Anything that's like a, say that we almost did that project. Like we've almost started that. And that'd be a good time. project. Mm -hmm. Cause like, you'd be like, okay, what would this core look like? Cause if you just like, okay, handshake protocol. And I mean, I feel like there's different ways you can word it to where it, it takes a lot of burden off of the person that's, Cause like it's up to them to have the, the structure built in their mind. Like, and, and every hindrance to that is, um, it makes it more and more difficult and it's going to make it, but if you can take things on their terms and, and so it's like, okay, what would this yeah. core look like outside of, yes. Exactly. So we need we need to to kind of have these translation matrices of of concepts that we've uh, developed or found. We've pulled them from all over the place. So basically, we're retranslate not like re re representing back into these various different systems so that we can easier more easy, easily navigate uh, uh, contact with people of those systems. So like another another example from the of Christianity of the Bible, like it's saying, uh, unless you are uh, born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So you can even take something like that and ask, have you been born again? Do you feel like you've been born again? Like there, that's an, it's an, and then, I, you know, I could insist that it's an actual experience, right? That someone would have. And then you get into the whole awkward thing, like, uh, oh, do I think that I'm, you know, I may be perceived as being better than somebody else because I just broke their heart <laughs> telling them that, you know, like if they haven't experienced rebirth uh, or spiritual rebirth, then maybe they haven't tasted uh, the kingdom of heaven or whatever, you know, like if their whole life well, hasn't changed, if, if they're just following the program that they were always given, if they haven't had that um, giant, that earth shattering experience, then maybe they need to keep seeking and maybe they're, com they're too comfortable. So that's exactly what I'm like. Those, those artifacts that Jesus left behind or in the writings, at least yep. like the being born again, meme, the, you know, like the whole loop that he had made about, you know, death and resurrection and, uh, like the anthropomorphization of death as like the great enemy and there's just, there, there's a lot to work with there but it's mm -hmm. like like yes. feedback there's like tons because, of I mean, material. you say that i said there's tons of material it's bootstrapping material the whole bible right it is but it's like i guess what would need to happen would be like a very systematic like because you yeah. have to I want to do that project. Like I'm very very interested in that. There's a lie that a lot of it um had its origin in uh, Buddhism as well. So mm -hmm. right so it should, uh, so it should be pretty easy. 601 Bible Hang on just a second. 7, yep. 8, 2, 5, 8, and just wash your hands full. Mhm. Mm all right. Okay, sorry about that. Do we need to uh, timestamp and cut out any personal information, such as a phone number? <laughs>
Oh, it's not my phone number. Okay, well, that's <laughs> fine then. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. It's, you might as well be typing a random number because you'll never know who it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Anyways, I mean, you. What's that? You, uh, you're, you meet it again, or maybe you got another Discord call. So, um, where we're at with this? Um, I don't know. I have to go pretty soon, though. We're kind of at, we played for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we got some more cards out there, more context. It always ends up being just the talking about the thing and never actually doing the thing. Okay, so maybe we should cut it off the, you know, around here then. Yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm pretty good. I gotta go soon, though. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I I, I should go. Cool. You go deal with the cookies. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, you did Eon leave? I guess. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Cool. Uh, Fair enough. Talk to you later. Um, potentially, at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stop right. recording now.